Hey loves, it's your girl Stronger Every Day. I hope everyone's having a good evening. I hope everything is okay. I hope everybody's safe. Um, children are home, safe and sound, doing homework. Everybody's doing great. What I want to share with you guys tonight is a major topic that a lot of people have been discussing, um, and that is organ trafficking. However, I'm going to do a little bit, I'm going to put my own spin on it. Um, and I am going to share with you guys what you need to know about illegal human organ trafficking. Give me one second while my tablet does what it needs to do. I am referencing a website called Big Think. <clears throat> and this is an article written by a man named Philip Perry. What you need to know about illegal human organ trafficking. There's that urban legend. You go to dinner with a good looking stranger Go back to their hotel room of yours or yours, have a drink, and pass out. The next thing you know, you're in the bathtub, naked, covered in ice, with a poorly stitched side, and a phone nearby with a note attached. Seek emergency medical care right away. According to the medical anthropologist Nancy Sherper Hughes, the truth is different, but it's just a senator and macabre and tells us something about the state of global affairs today. Sharper Hughes is a professor of medical anthropology at the University of California, Berkeley, and co-founder of and director of Organ Watch, a medical human rights project. She is also an advisor to the World Health Organization on issues related to global transplantation and has worked on the problem of human organ and tissue trafficking for a full decade. Yes, the illegal organ trade is real and it may be happening at a hospital near you. Encapsulated within its traversity of, ju of justice, an argument over global equality and the dark secretive underbelly of medicine science, which few of us have dared to peek at. Today, Sharper Hughes is the director of Organs Watch, a nonprofit that keeps track of global organ trafficking. She is also the chair of Berkeley's doctoral program in medical anthropology. The truth is, organ trafficking is a reality in many parts of the world. Documented cases have shown up in Indonesia, China, India, South Africa, Brazil, and many other countries. The reason? The demand for organ transplants, especially kidney transplants, is just so high, 123,000 men, women, and children are on the organ donors list right now. An average of 25 will die each day. As a result, there is a huge scramble to find organs, legitimate or otherwise. A lung guys can go from between 150,000 to 170,000. A cornea can go for 30,000. Heart, 130,000 to 160,000. Liver, 150,000. Pancreas, 98,000 to 130,000. Kidney, 62,000. This was sourced by Kilgore and Mattis. 11,000 human organs were obtained on the black market in 2010, according to the WHO. That organization states that an organ is sold every hour, every day, every day of the year. Sharp hues cause the demand for human body parts, organ, and tissues insatiable. According to her, it's easier to trade in human body parts once they have been dehumanized through the process of organ and tissue harvesting. This high demand for kidney transplants have set up a depressing yet all too familiar dynamic 
a trail of organ harvesting flowing from poor to rich in the United States and the global south to global north. The poorest slums of the world supply kidneys, for instance, to donors in the U.S., Europe, U.K., Israel, and Canada. The U.N. is even looking into reports that ISIS, the wealthiest terrorist group ever, may be in the business of selling its victims' organs. U.N. Special Envoy Nikolai Maladonov, sorry if I butchered that name, said that the matter is being investigated. Meanwhile, Sherper Hughes says organ trafficking in wartime, particularly in dirty wars or those with undisciplined armies, is not uncommon. Her life reads like that of a secret agent. The anthropologist has posed as a medical doctor in countries all over the world in order to investigate organ trafficking. She says some of the, of the U.S. topmost medical facilities have been caught with illegally trafficked organs. Sharper Hughes has tracked organs to hospitals and medical centers in New York. Hold on, guys. Give me a second. Sorry guys, the infamous puppy. I'm gonna give you guys a video of her and her shenanigans. Where were we? She says some of the US topmost medical facilities have been caught with illegally trafficked organs. Sharper Hughes has tracked organs to hospitals and medical centers in New York, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia, among other places. At one point, she found herself across the table from a group of organ transplant surgeons at a top Philadelphia hospital. The 60-year-old showed these physicians a 60-page report of interviews from a labyrinth trial of buyers, sellers, and middlemen, stretching across the world, showing just what the kidneys those doctors were implanting came from. The WHO estimates that one-fifth of all transplanted kidneys, or 70,000 of them, are trafficked each year. Organized crime syndicates work behind the scenes. Their methods are varied. Sometimes they trick the person into giving up the organ. For instance, there are cases where the so-called patient is treated for a sickness they don't have, and the trafficker makes off with the organ, or they force the person into giving it. But oftentimes, it is a cash payout that draws people out. There are cases where the person decides to sell their organ, say a kidney or a section of liver, but gets cheated, ending up with a much lower amount than what they were promised beforehand. From there, the kidney or whatever it is goes to organ brokers who can get 150,000 per transplant or more. 200,000 is not uncommon. Meanwhile, the donor only gets around 5,000. These brokers across international lines to find broker-friendly hospitals in the U.S. and other developed nations. Two surgeons in the room with Schaefer Hughes in Philadelphia were implicated. The meeting ended poorly. The medical anthropologist was tossed out. The follow-up internal investigation turned up nothing. Schaefer Hughes believes many doctors are either involved, ignore the organ or where the organ came from, don't ask questions, or in denial. Let's look at a few documented cases of organ trafficking. Chinese hospitals are a particular concern. In China in 2006, a hospital run by the state communist party was exposed for trafficking the organs of prisoners of conscience. For example, forced organ harvesting. 10,000 transplantable organs are sold out of China each year, a market worth $1 billion. Despite the fact that few donors are on official list, this has become the subject of a documentary, Human Harvest, China's Organ Trafficking International Investigators like David Mata and David Kilgore, cite evidence that tens of thousands have been killed in China by Chinese officials to support illegal organ trafficking. The Chinese Communist Party has denied all allegations of transplant operations claiming that neither transplant center 
nor an organ harvesting program exist. And Al here in February of this year, helped break up three-person trafficking ring in Indonesia. Here, villagers in West Java, around 30 individuals, had sold their kidneys to the tune of $5,000 apiece. Other stories include a child in China who had its eye cut out, possibly for the corneas. An African girl who was kidnapped and rescued in the UK before her organs could be harvested. And in America, the dizzying case of Kendrick Johnson. His death was deemed a freak accident in the school gym. They said the boy suffocated in a roll-up gym mat. Loved ones remained skeptical. However, after a protracted fight, his family finally got a court order. They had the body exhumed and independently autopsied. During the autopsy, the medical examiner discovered something terrifying. The Georgia team was found to have all his organs removed and replaced with newspaper. I am sure all of you guys know the tragedy, the tragic loss of Kendrick. Um, if you guys do not know, please look him up, Kendrick Johnson. Although organ donation is regulated in the U.S., there are ways to beat the system via illegal trade. Corruptible funeral home directors forge death certificates and consent forms before the human remains are disposed of. In the developing world, people are kidnapped and used for their organs. Children sold into sexual slavery sometimes have their organs sold. And there are those in slums who give up their tissues, a piece of their liver, or their kidney, just to get their hands on a few hundred American dollars. While Asia is certainly in an area of concern, Schaefer Hughes has seen advertisements requesting organs in newspapers in Brazil, Moldova, and parts of Africa. She has also witnessed middlemen trawling the streets for donors in some countries holding wads of 100 bills. In China, one ad stated a kidney would give you $4,000 and a new iPad. The illegal kidney trade in Pakistan driven by property conditions, yields a price of $1,000. Organ transplant tourism is a growing field, and here black market organs are often supplied. The UN hub of global initiative to fight human trafficking has listed the organ trade as one of their top priorities. Same day 3D printed organs using stem cells will make donations obsolete but human organ tra trafficking will continue to be a serious global problem as long as global inequality remains unchanged. Desperate people full of influence and those just as de desperate financially tight. Tight regulations are not. Believe there are huge profits to be had. The urban legend is scary, if not a bit melodramatic. The reality, however, is it often is is in some sense even more horrifying. <clears throat> Another thing that I want to show with you guys is, let's see, I'm going to share with you guys another article. It's from the Atlantic Health Archive, Living Cadavers, How the Poor Are Tricked into Selling Their Organs. One minute while the tablet loads, guys. <clears throat> okay. Living Cadavers. How the Poor Are Tricked Into Selling Their Organs. This is by a reporter, Brian Resnick, The Atlantic. <clears throat> In America, if you need an organ transplant, you wait. You wait patiently, with a grim clock ticking away. For some generous stranger who died and happened to mark organ donor, in his, on his driver's license. The other option is asking a family member or a friend to donate a piece of their being, knowingly taking on medical risk, but with full and honest cooperation. But what if you could forego all of that? 
But what if you could buy an organ? It may sound reasonable paying for an organ from someone who could use the money more than an attack anatomy, but the real picture is grim. In research paper published last week in Medical Anthropology Quarterly, Michigan State anthropologist Manure recounts that nearly 15 months he, stepped, he spent doing field work in Bangladesh while he infiltrated the illegal organ trafficking network. What he saw there, he describes as nothing short of exploitation. The services transportation fields, fulfills the needs of fewer than 1% of the population. While the majority of Bangladeshis die in silence, knowing they could have saved their lives through this modern technology. As of 2007, the World Health Organization that there are about a dozen countries involved in organ trafficking networks. For obvious reasons, hard data on the trade is difficult to come by, and it often takes investigative field work, like Manu's, Manu Monet, to uncover how organs move through underground markets. In 2008, paper in the American Journal of Transplantation estimated that organ trafficking accounts for roughly 5 to 10 percent of all the kidney transplants performed in the world. Even in America, organ trade is not unheard of. In October, a Brooklyn man admitted to brokering kidney sales between Israel donors and New Jersey recipients. He reportedly earned $410,000 from this transaction. Curious about the existence of an organ trade network in his native Bangladesh, Monur began contra contracting friends and journalists while working on his master's degree. But phone calls are, really, are only so enlightening. He says he had to see it with his own eyes. There is no way I can open up this underworld without being there. During his field work, Monet interviewed 33 poor Bangladeshis who decided to sell their kidneys, many of whom initially didn't even know what a kidney was. Burdened by debt, with the mouse to feed, these sellers were lured in by newspaper classifieds, which imply a bounty to those willing to donate. In his research, Manuel collected more than 1,000 classifieds in popular newspapers, like the ones shown below asking for organs and marketing impossible offers such as citizenship in a foreign country. A kidney wanted. This is one of the, Afri the classifieds. A kidney is needed for a seriously ill patient, blood group B+. The patient is living in Italy. If a good-hearted person donates a kidney, he or she will be amply, amply rewarded or offered a job and citizenship in Italy. Contact within three days, Dr. Abiba Aheya between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. or 5 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. Telephone number 811-6010. Another ad, kidney wanted, blood group B+, plus, O+, plus, and O negative, female preferable. Contact phone in Germany, can't be called through the internet, can be called through the internet between 2 p.m. and 1 p.m. Bangladesh time. To entrap the potential sellers, organ brokers tell them that they have two kidneys, but one of them is sleeping in the body. During the operation, doctors awaken the dormant kidney and take the old one out for, don for donation. In this view, the second kidney is just baggage, a cash reverse reserve buried in the lower back. Furthermore, Sellers are told that their second kidney is no use to them if their first one fails, which is quite which quiets thoughts of what I need that second kidney in the future. They're also told the surgery is 100% safe. It's the same story the sellers told me again and again, Mom Rose said. I couldn't believe how much of a dirty trick it can be. After they agree to donate, sellers are tissue tested. If there is a match, the broker will offer the seller around $1,150, but in most cases, the sellers do not receive anywhere near that amount. The organ broker tax off, tack off extra fees for travel and other logistics, and the seller makes something, sometimes only half the initial amount, and even then only after the surgery is complete.
<clears throat> this man, after one of these surgeries, woke up with a 20-inch scar, long scar around his torso, a constant reminder that he sold his body, part of his body for a few hundred dollars. The brokers for, forge fake passports and legal documents to make it appear plausible that the seller is donating to a blood relative. In one case, Mam Nua found a 38-year-old Hindu seller who had to get circumcised to donate to a Muslim recipient. The circumcision was done crudely and only with logical, local anesthesia. When I was coming back home, the anesthesia stopped working, he told the anthropologist, and I felt like I was in a nightmare. Most of the sellers Ramriya spoke to were taken to India for the surgery, and upon arrival, they had their passports confiscated so they could not leave. One case I found was a 23-year-old college student, he says. He went to India and realized that he was making a mistake, so he wanted to come back without giving his kidney. The broker hired two thugs, Indian thugs, and they basically beat him and forced him to go into the operation room. This man, like all the other sellers, woke up from surgery with a 20-inch long scar around his torso, a constant reminder that he sold part of his body for a few hundred dollars. We are living cadavers, another told Mamra. By selling our kidneys, our bodies are lighter, but our chests are heavier than ever. All but one of the sellers Mamra interviewed were Muslim, and in Islam, there is a strict taboo against body mutilation. After the surgery, Feelings of remorse and shame would set in. They wanted to get rid of their poverty, so they got entrapped in that system, he says. But then they realized that they sold God's gifts. And when they go back into the afterlife, God would ask them, where, where are your body parts? Where are the missing body parts? And that creates a state where they are living with shame and disgrace. When they returned to their daily lives, the kidney sellers reported that their economic conditions deteriorated. Despite the small influx in cash, only two of the 33 sellers used the money responsibly. Others were handicapped by the experience and found themselves unable to do the manual labor they were used to. In the end, the brokers won, earning about $5,000 per transaction. This is a reality for a lot of our people. We are losing people, not because they are missing. The majority of them have been sold into sex trafficking or organ trafficking. So I want you guys to always keep that in the back of your mind to always be aware of who you're with, to always be around of your, aware of your surroundings, to question everything. If you have to go to the doctor, question everything. Get a second opinion because like I read in those two articles, American doctors are doing this as well. They're claiming that a person is sick and need to remove that organ. And 99% of the time that organ is a healthy organ and they're, they're taking it for someone who is rich so that they do not have to wait for that organ while you while us suffer no one thinks of the fact we have two kidneys for a reason just in case one does fail if someone was to trick us into selling our kidney what if our one and only kidney goes bad I am not saying be against organ donation. What I am saying is please take it off of your driver's license because that makes you a target. Put it in your wheel if you want your organs donated. I was a broker. I know that this may be a little heartbreaking and scary for people, but you should also please talk to your children. Don't leave your kids in the darkness. Let them know what's going on in our world. Let them know that not everyone is safe. 
let them know that not everyone wants to do good by them. We are, as it was stated, human cadavers. They are looking for people, and it does not matter the age. If you are a healthy person, you can be 50, 60, 80 years old. If they find something in you that they want, they will take it. They will murder you or they will trick you, especially poor people who feel that they have no, no choice but to sell their organs. So, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Please look up the documentary that I told you about with China and their organ trafficking. And um, leave me any comments that you would like for me. I'm sorry, guys. I'm mumbling. Please leave me you know, in the description in the comments if there's anything that you guys want me to talk about, anything that you guys want me to discuss. I love you guys. I hope that everybody has a wonderful night. Please be safe. Be aware of your surroundings. And hug those children. Love those children. Remember the last time you said I love you to someone. And remember the last time you heard it yourself. I love you guys. And I will talk to you later. Bye.